The original Die Hard from 1988, quite possibly the best action movie ever made. Die Hard! Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on the original Die Hard from 1988 now. Die Hard with a Vengeance, the third Die Hard movie, is a movie that I grew up with, a movie that I've always loved. I've seen so many times on sitcoms, there'll be dumb guys joking about yeah, watch Die Hard again. Oh, watch Die Hard every Friday. Die Hard is my favorite movie. Die Hard, still great. Hey, what do you say we make it a double feature? Die Hard 2. Joey, this is Die Hard 1 again. But well, we watch it a second time and it's Die Hard 2. It's probably gonna be like Rambo. It's gonna be like just a generic, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I like all those movies, but it's just gonna be another dumb guys movie. And I couldn't be more wrong. There is something so special about the original Die Hard and it is so much more than just an action movie. And once you see some of the worst sequels of Die Hard that feel much more like a normal action movie, you appreciate just how good this original film is. And it's over two hours and I don't think they wasted a second. I actually even wanted even more than they gave us just because what they gave us was so perfect. This movie is so good that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to list all the pros that I have in one video, but I'm going to attempt. So let's start off right here with the pros. It's a, pretty much a perfect action movie. And when I was kind of comparing uh, my other favorite action movies to this one. There's just something special about the DNA, about the style, about just the way that they set this up that I think that I like this movie just a hair more than all the other action movies. And the best way I could describe Bruce Willis in these movies is entertaining. Now, I know pretty much every actor is trying to be entertaining, but there's just something special about Bruce Willis in this movie, in Die Hard with a Vengeance, and in my opinion, in The Last Boy Scout, to where the movie is so good, but with Bruce Willis in there and his just elevated entertainment value, they're just more entertaining to me than any of the other movies. And it is Bruce Willis, but it is also all the little details that they do in this movie. So another thing I really liked about this movie is the setting, Nakatomi Plaza. So I'm kind of weird with settings. I really like when a movie takes me to another place or really makes me feel like I'm in the situation. I have a really good eye for green screens I can spot them like that and that will actually take me out of the situation but I mean you have so many shots of John McClane on a roof or 30 floors up uh, looking down looking in all the lights I mean right when he arrives there's a little bit of a party going on and it's just a beautiful view of a sunset and the sun setting the rest of the movie is going to be at night so you get this little glimpse of sun, just a beautiful sunset. I just can't describe enough how much I like Nakatomi Plaza as a setting and really opened my eyes to how much I like an action movie confined to a specific spot. One of the best settings for a movie that I could possibly think of. Pretty much all the side characters here are memorable, like the police cop that helps him, the guy from Family Matters. I like that guy. You have Argyle, which is his limo driver, who pretty much is waiting for him the whole movie, but when the bad guys take over the plaza, he's kind of stuck in the underground area. The side villains are memorable, and I gotta say on first watch, it's very easy to watch this movie as just like, action scenes happening over and over, but there's so much detail. And especially on rewatch, you really do get to feel all these individual characters. It's not just random henchmen. They do have their own personalities and styles that I appreciate. And then on top of that, you have the villain, which is just one of the best villains in probably cinema action history. This guy is just so entertaining to watch. And there's just something about him that is really, really good and authentic, but is also very entertaining. And I couldn't picture another actor even coming close to this performance in The Villain. Another thing I liked about this movie was that it has a Christmas vibe throughout. I don't know, I do like movies with a, with a specific theme. I do like when a movie makes me feel a specific kind of tone or theme that they're going for. I always like that. So 
On top of the Nakatomi Plaza, it just has so much stuff that's themed around Christmas. You have Christmas music, you have Christmas trees, you have Christmas jokes when he sends the guy down on the elevator and writes ho 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 on his jacket. I actually like the Christmas vibe in this movie and it is 100% something I would want to watch every Christmas because of how much I like this movie and how much I don't really have one specific movie to watch on Christmas. So. I really do like the Christmas theme here. It's over a two hour movie and there's almost no wasted spaces. I just watched another reviewer and he said that every single thing in the movie has a meaning and he pointed out a few things that I didn't even notice. And upon rewatch, there's little connections that I didn't notice the first time. That's like, wow, like the level of detail here and how things just perfectly interweave. I'm just really blown away. It was paced so correctly. Like you have just enough of Bruce Willis getting there, some good views, meeting people. You have just enough time when the villains take over. But another thing I like about this movie is once the villains take over, you don't really know 100% what their plan is. They let you know right away, we have a lot of things planned here. Like we actually want the FBI to come here because it's part of our plan, but you don't know what it is. And so that helps the pacing so much more. You see all this grand takeover of this building and you don't know exactly where it's gonna go. And I love the mystery aspect. You know you're in store for something great and you don't know what it is. So the pacing was just brilliant. And on top of that, I mean, you think about an action movie. What, how long is an action movie? An hour and a half, maybe an hour and 40 minutes. This is slightly over two hours and not one second was wasted. And I feel like because it was two hours and it was perfect, it was just like more goodness in one package and it makes this movie even better. Last pro that I have is all the different ideas for stunts, for escapes, for how John McClane's gonna get a police to help him because he's stuck on this building. How's he gonna fight people? I just, all the little ideas that they had throughout this movie just felt so unique. And I've watched some of the other Die Hard movies, kind of this happenstance thrown together thing, but almost all of the life or death situations Bruce Willis gets into, it feels like he has to do it and he's not really exaggerating it to do this non-stop action over and over. It almost feels necessary for him to survive, blending crazy action with just the right amount of realism. So I feel like I'm forgetting something in the pros here, guys, but I just love this movie from beginning to end. I actually watched it twice, and for some reason, when I think about coming home at night, after work, wanna put on some movie to relax, like this is the movie that is so beyond perfect, it has everything. It's R-rated, it's so entertaining, it's just a fun movie experience, and I gotta say, it's probably my favorite action movie of all time. I wanna let that simmer for a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that it is. All right, guys, if I were to go into cons here, there is almost none. Um, the only cons I could think of is it is dated. This building has this really advanced computer software for the time, and it looks really dated. Besides that, nothing else is really dated in the movie. And I did watch this in 4K, so I don't know if this movie was just so much better because I watched it in 4K. I don't know, but I did notice that John McClane's stunt double was somewhat obvious. It was far from the worst stunt double I've ever seen, but it was also very obvious that the guy had a little bit more hair and his hair was a little bit darker. I really, really noticed stunt doubles and I really noticed green screens, I think more than other people, but that's literally the only two things I could say about it is that the technology was a little bit dated and that I could notice Bruce Willis's stunt double some of the time. So besides that, guys, I really don't have any cons. I love this movie. It's turned into a feel-good movie for me. It's turned into something I could put on all the time, something that just makes me feel okay and normal because I like it so much and it's just so entertaining to me. So if I had to rate this movie, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10. I rate perfect movies like a 9.5 so nine is pretty much as close. It might as well be a 9.5 because I don't have any, I can't really say anything better about it. Buy, try, or pass, I think this is 100% a buy. When you compare it to the other Die Hard sequels, there's all these crazy stunts, but for some reason, 
it just doesn't hit because it's just this crazy stunt after crazy stunt and it doesn't have a good enough story. There's just something special about this story. I love it. Just go out and buy it. It is my favorite action movie. Personally, try to get the 4K if you can. Anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of your guys' help. You guys are the best. Having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace. Something's wrong. Cops? John. Tell me you got that. I got it, I got it.